All righty, folks, the real estate market, the housing market is tough. I am seeing really odd behavior. And I wanted to share this with Omar and kind of seeing what he's seeing and with his friends. How you doing, buddy? I'm good. What's up, Michael? What's up, everybody? Do me a favor, Omar. Remind people where you're at, what you're doing, all of that, because I think that will be important for what I talk about next. Um, I am in, I'm, I'm a real estate broker, real estate investor, real estate team leader. Um, and you know, we buy and sell, we flip, we wholesale, we hold rental properties, um, do and in all. our area, you have Airbnb, do it all. Do it all. Yes. And you've been doing yes. it for decades, right? So a long time, long time. Yeah. Yeah. So you've seen some stuff. And the reason I wanted to go through that first is you and I together have 40 plus years experience, hundreds of units, uh, mm -hmm. done hundreds of flips, done some wholesale. I mean, yep. we've done it all combined together. I am seeing two extremes today. I'm seeing some people in the real estate game, which could be anywhere from home buyers to flippers to wholesalers, frankly, flipping out, like right. acting like it's Armageddon. And then I see some people acting like nothing's changed and we're going on to the moon. Right. And I frankly don't get either extreme, but I wanted to talk to you about it. A, are you seeing the same thing? And, B, what is going on today? It's crazy. Hey, you know what? That's it, it, funny you should say that because um, it's one extreme to the next. I'm seeing, like you just said, I'm seeing people um, not knowing what's going to happen, uh, obviously, in the next two, three months. And then I'm seeing other people that are jumping in um, to get that home ownership to really reduce that um that purchase price because right now if you're a buyer shit i mean you could save a good 25 yeah. percent off of that house or off, yeah. off of what you would be paying you know 16 17 months ago when yeah. it was a different market so it's like you know it, it's weird because like i'm right in the middle and and i'm feeling michael i'm feeling like if there's still houses that are under the median they're going to sell regardless of the interest rate because people want to still buy yeah. above it. Not touch. I think if you're a seller, if I think you're, if you're a seller above that number, fuck man. Uh, like I, that, I, I don't, I don't that's, know. That, you know what? You just put your finger on it and I know why you're in the middle. Also. I lean the majority, 98% of what I do is maybe 95% of what I do is buy and hold. So okay. I'm in the camp of, I'm excited. I'm not afraid of aggressive offers. I'm not afraid no. of asking for terms. I'm not afraid of follow-up. I'm not afraid. None of that stuff scares me. I know mm -hmm. my numbers and I'll write them all day long. And I have a track record. I did two last year as proof. And I'll do, and I know I'll do it again this year. So that's why I'm excited. That's why I lean that way because I, I will get a deal that makes sense today and not afraid to hold it forever. Right, right. If you're on the side where you are, you have to sell to make chunk money. You have to sell to pay payroll. You have to sell to fund your marketing expense. You should be scared shitless because there's buyers out there like me who, um, you know, who want to get a deal. Right. And especially if you're exiting on stuff above the median, I mean, what are you doing? Are you praying to the gods and lighting incense at night or what the hell are you doing? Cause that's, you don't want to be there, but I think that's what I'm actually seeing. It's what are you, are you a buyer investor, long-term holder? Are you a seller? You know, I like there's some people, Omar, that run such tight business, like cash flow, that if they don't get that 15 K chunk money, they're out of business. They can't make payroll. I think that's what's going on. And what's crazy, man, you, you, you say that about, about funding your marketing, funding your payroll by selling property by, I mean, if you have the houses to sell, okay, you know, you got to weather the storm somehow, obviously, but if your normal income, you know, is not up to par, then you got to redirect, you know, you got to figure out like, Hey, you know, in full transparency, I sold one of my big properties that I got top dollar for right before it jumped up to 8%. Mm -hmm. 
we got seven hundred thousand dollars on one of these properties that I only paid four hundred k for. So I did that as a move because I had equity in there, right? To go and utilize to go buy under the median and right. flip under the median, so I can double or triple that amount that I received. But that shit was, I didn't want to. I did not want to sell that house. I had a 4% loan, but I'm like, well, a 700K, I mean, it it definitely, I, I would never pay $700,000 for that house. Never. Mm -hmm. So that's when I said, all right, I'll sell it because I know I'll never pay that kind of money for that house. Yeah. And then, but, and that's why that's why I think you're in the middle, right? And it made total sense. To I me am. Because yeah. you, you kind of live in both sides, right? And I more do. importantly, you're not, you're not, you're not leveraged to the hill. You can make payroll without selling stuff, right? You have the cash reserves. You, you, you make smart moves, i.e. selling that 700 house to replenish the kitty. And you're not afraid to buy and hold. And the, the other thing I think that's really funny is, and I guess I shouldn't say funny, uh, factual, I guess, is there was a lot of flippers, yourself included, who got spanked for deals you bought in Q4 that you sold in Q1, right? Because January and February were pretty tough. I think there's and a lot of are. folks that are like going to do it again. I'm mean, like, yeah, you guys didn't learn your lesson. What the hell? Okay. So uh, topic, if you're buying in Q4, right? We have, I literally just switched three of my projects that I had in escrow and I just exited. We just signed two assignments. And I'm in escrow with docs about to sign. And I'm like, you know what? I'm looking at the $50,000. I'm looking at the $40,000 out of my pocket to buy. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to do it. Immediately switched the page. Had a phone call yesterday with the seller. Got a $10,000 price reduction. I wholesaled it. And we're making thirty-five dollars on one and then forty dollars on the other one. So now we're positive $75,000 on deals that I'm not – putting money in now you're in and out and, and you're done yeah. you, do you know why and this is the crazy part and and i don't know if it's um if it's because i'm used to flipping yeah michael but now i'm seeing the cost of my capital yeah like my kitty right the money that i have saved is going that house that house that house that house plus payments plus rehab so i'm sitting here like okay well, if I run two or three, okay, fine. Not seven or eight. Yeah. Not ten. Not yeah. unless I'm stealing this, them and I'm exiting at six figures. This is not. But that's not the case. Makes no, no. But do you have a feeling? Do you think 2024 is going to change? Where it's going to be like all of a sudden all this demand, and there is a tickle down from eight to seven and a half or seven. All of a sudden, I, all these damn people are going to jump. And I don't know, man. It's it's That's why I'm in the middle, Michael. That's why I'm talking to you. Yeah. So I think you've brought up the most important thing for 2024, and that is the 30-year mortgage. Because yes. I believe – I've been studying consumer behavior for 30 years, and I've had a pretty good track record of calling their behavior. We – the housing market, and it's really because of interest rates, are blocking okay. demand. Right. This is why you and I talked, I think there it was three, three weeks ago about cancellations. Right. We had a we had a big spike in cancellations because people were getting a loan, getting into contract and then realizing the payments are like, fuck it, I'm out of this. I can't do this. There's so what's no happening way. now, what's happening now at eight percent is demand is significantly constricted. Uh -huh. The question is, when does that loosen? Now, it will loosen the whole way down. It will loosen at seven and three quarters. It will loosen at seven and a half. It'll loosen at seven and a quarter. It'll loosen at seven. The question is the degree. I don't think the degree is going to be that great until the mortgage rate has a six handle. Mm. I think if mortgages have about six, nine, nine, six, nine, six, seven, five, somewhere in there, you're going to see a wave of demand and unfortunately no supply. So the question What's becomes, that mean? Oh. Th that's the question. The question becomes, when could we see 30 year mortgage rate sub seven? My wild ass guess is nowhere before July. 
So oh, last so year, you mean last so, summer? Okay. Yeah, it'll be so. Last year, rates went down in spring. I think this year, meaning twenty twenty four, it will be summer. So, spring's going to be, it'll be okay. Below the median will be okay. Luxury will suck. Um, but that's what I see. That's my wild ass guess. You know, Halloween day, twenty twenty three. Okay. That's uh that's something that we can note because um it's different. You, you know, spring versus summer. Yeah. If you feel that summer is going to drop that interest rate, I mean, and we're speculating shit. Oh, we could just, we could see nine percent next year and absolutely. say what the fuck are we think? You know? Yeah, it like, could be ten for all I know. I'm just I'm just one guy guessing on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm the other guy that's guessing. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. We're we're flipping coins, man. We're just flipping coins. But at the end of the day, yeah. uh, consumers are very uh, predictable. Uh, we now know that eight percent is bad. Demand is constricted. At some lower rate, demand will be released. My guess is sub seven, and above six and a half. And if we're right, and that avalanche comes when we have no inventory, and we have do the other thing, Omar. Yeah. Builders are pulling back. They Builders are actually, aren't building it. They're not building at eight percent. They're like, nope, no. we're, we're we'll slow down. And, and why is that? Because they don't want to buy down the rate. Yeah, they no. don't want to pay the margin, right? They'll let the money sit in the bank at five percent. Uh, yeah, the housing market next year is going to be wild because we're not going to be selling existing homes. We're not going to be building new homes. Rates are going to come down. And it could be pretty wild. So, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Omar, any closing uh, thoughts? Yeah, you know what? That, that um, you know, if we're going to, in regards to this, it's like, if you're going to be in this game of flipping houses, uh, try to exit, you know, under that median, like we've always talked about, mm -hmm. especially now, uh, if you're an agent that's out there listening, go get really good at seller conversations, you know, get deep understandings as to why people need to sell um and then hopefully you'll get that signature on that on that listing agreement and you're pricing on them right because there will be a slowdown but on that listing side you know you have to list to last i know this is an investment show okay. yeah. but you're here for this all so some of the investors are still agents mm -hmm. i still take some listings cuz they get dropped in my lap so yeah. why not Sometimes go. they're better than the flips because shit, it's not even your money out there. It's just a little bit of time and you make yeah. 20 or 30 K. So just, uh, just know your market, figure that part out and, you know, do the work, do the work. All right, buddy. Take care. Better.